Welcome to the iPhone 13 Pro Max cinematic mode test and review video. This entire video is going to be shot on the iPhone 13 Pro Max in cinematic mode. And so if you have an HDR enabled device, make sure you go ahead and turn HDR on on YouTube. That way you get to see the full effect of just how good this cinematic mode looks. Now let's jump into it. So first of all, what is cinematic mode? If for anybody out there who's new to iPhones, or maybe you're thinking about upgrading to the latest phone, you're not really sure what's the latest and greatest and what exactly cinematic mode is. Basically, simply put, if you're watching this video and you see that behind me, the background's a little bit blurred, like my sign over there is a little bit blurry. So that's what cinematic mode is. Cinematic mode is a new feature they have exclusively on the new iPhone 13 models. So you need to have one of the newest iPhone 13 models to use this, whether it's the iPhone 13 mini, the regular iPhone 13, or one of the pro models. If you have an earlier iPhone, you cannot take advantage of the cinematic mode. So basically, this is Apple's attempt at being able to produce depth of field is what the technical term is, or the blurry background in your videos without actually having a different lens, which is how cameras do it. If you have a real camera, then basically how it works is if you have the right lens, you can blur out the background and focus just on your subjects, which in this case would be me. But I'm gonna take you guys outside and show you some different examples of cinematic mode out in the wild of when to use it and when not to use it. So make sure you stick around for that. Now, if you do have one of the new iPhone 13 models, you've probably already seen how to use this. There's a little tab there on your camera when you open it up and it just says cinematic and automatically if you turn that on, you'll be shooting in cinematic mode. But the thing is, you kind of have to know what to do with it or have some ideas in mind of what you want to film in this cinematic mode to really fully take advantage of it. And that's where I'm gonna go outside and show you some specific examples right now. Now here's gonna be the first good example of when you should use the cinematic mode. Notice how when I hold the phone here, everything behind me just sort of gets blurred out and this works beautiful when you're outside. It's probably not the best for vlogging though, which is something I do a lot outside. Unfortunately, at this moment, the cinematic mode is only available on the three times optical zoom lens and the standard wide angle lens. You cannot use it with the ultra wide angle lens at this moment, which kind of sucks because if you like to do a lot of vlogging, that ultra wide angle is perfect so you can get everything in behind you and you can see a lot of the background but also you can still be in the frame as well. With just the regular wide angle, as you can see, me and my face takes up most of the frame, although it does an excellent job of blurring out everything behind me. Now here's another good example of when you would wanna use the cinematic mode. I'm just using this cone as an example, but say you really want to make this cone the focus point of your shot, and as you can see, the software does a beautiful job of blurring out the water in the background. You can tell that it's the ocean still there, but you don't really see it as much. It's not the focus of the shot, which is the entire point of the cinematic mode. Now I wanna give you a couple examples of when you should not use the cinematic mode. So I am filming with the cinematic mode turned on right now, but if you notice, it just looks like an ordinary shot of any other video. And the reason is because I don't have a subject right in front of my lens to take focus on. So it just looks like an ordinary video when you don't have a subject to focus on. So it's really important that you find something to focus on in order to really maximize what the cinematic mode has to offer. Here's another example. So you would think these plants are gonna be the subject, right? I'm gonna have this plants and it's gonna blur out the background. But the other thing is, is you need to get close enough to the subject so it really blurs it out. Like notice when you see all the plants, you can still see everything normally as if I was using the camera regularly, but it's not until I zoom in and get closer to say this leaf right here, that everything else in the background falls out of focus and just this leaf in front of me comes into focus. Now that you guys have seen some good examples, of when to use the cinematic mode, when it really makes sense to use it, and when it really makes no sense to use it, I want to just go over a couple of reasons 
why I'm not really using this much in my YouTube videos, even though I think it's very cool, but there are a few practical reasons of why I'm not using it, and here they are. The first one is that even though it's a very beautiful image and it's in HDR, it's still only in 1080p, and for a while now, in fact, ever since I started on YouTube two years ago, all of my videos have been shot in 4K, and to me, shooting anything in 1080p now just feels like a step backwards, and that was one of the biggest disappointments when Apple announced they were going to have the cinematic mode because they didn't say anything in their keynote presentation about it only being in 1080p, but only to come to find out later on going to the website for the first time after these phones first launched and seeing the asterisk next to the cinematic mode that it would only be in 1080p. That was a huge letdown for me and it still is and it's one of the main reasons I don't use it still but there is another reason. The other reason I'm not using the cinematic mode much still is because it's more difficult to work with in your editor in the timeline because when you just shoot standard 4K footage that's not an HDR, basically it comes down to an HDR thing. When you're using HDR footage, especially if you're shooting a video and you're combining clips that are in HDR and not in HDR, you have to use HDR tools in Final Cut Pro basically bring the HDR to the same downgraded level. So it kind of makes no sense to do that. Unless you're shooting a full video in HDR, like this one right here that you're watching, to me it doesn't really make sense to use the cinematic mode. And I stopped using the HDR mode basically when they first came out with it last year with the 12 models because back then there really weren't that many good tools to produce a good quality HDR video and the compatibility between devices really wasn't great. And I did make a full video about that about a year ago, which you can go ahead and check out. I'll have it linked down in the description below in case you wanna know more about the problems with shooting in HDR. And to build off the points that I just mentioned, in order to even import your cinematic mode clips into your computer, first they need to process on your iPhone and I shot this whole video and all the videos you just saw, and it took almost 30 minutes for my iPhone 13 Pro Max to process these clips just so I could transfer them to my computer and start editing. The payoff just really isn't there in my opinion. Sure, the cinematic mode does look very cool, but unless you're shooting some kind of very professional project where you need things to look absolutely perfect and you really wanna go through that extra effort, I just don't think that it's really worth it for most people to use it. But if you're just shooting on your iPhone and it's just for fun and you don't really make videos for a living or you don't have a YouTube channel and you just want things to look cool on your phone when you show it to people, then go ahead and go for it. But for professional use, I think it's still not there and it's still kind of difficult to work with. If you guys enjoyed this video, then go ahead and check out the next one over here on the screen. It's all about the iPhone 13 Pro Max versus the 12 Pro Max, specifically the camera, and I'll see you guys over there in the next one.